Hello, and welcome back to what's bubbling at Zim. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to conclude our examining of what's new in Zim NFT 01. That's available at the Zim site, zimjs.com. There's an arrow here that links through to what was new in Zim NFT 00. And that was making NFTs with Zim. There's lots of other things as well that we would find in, in the change log. But right now we're going to be looking at what's new in Zim NFT 01. And we've been looking at the news section for that. However, before we forget, let's uh, I'll show you where the official sort of change log of all this stuff is. It's under Docs. Well, this is one way to get in here. And then look up Updates. See Updates for Changes. So if I click on Updates, this is Zim Updates. And what happens is in our community, uh, we list, uh, hey, Zim is launched. And then we put a link to the updates, uh, as well as to maybe to a mini site or something like that. And then all the bubbling videos where you can see this. So here's Zim Updates, and we've got Zim NFT. It only added 4K, but that's because the main updates this time were the CAM module, which isn't included in, in this, so the CAM module is separate, and the dialog, which was in the game module. So those are uh, the main things that we've added, and they're external to Zim. So we've done bubblings on those. We've done bubblings on the dialog. We've done bubblings on the CAM. We did bubblings on the emoji. Uh, we have some crystal updates. So the purpose of this bubbling is to talk about all of the things that we didn't talk about in the main ones. So that's available on another, on the mini site in this thing called Variety. So this page called Variety. And as a matter of fact, probably be best to look through that. But here is indeed uh, probably a list of many of those things that we'll be looking at. I just may as well look at them visually. Okay. So that's available here. We may come back in and then go over some of the general fixes, which may not even be on that on that uh, variety page. So why don't we just leave it here and we can come back and find it later. Sound good? Yep. Yep, 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 yep. So let's go to the mini site. Uh, we need a mini site. Well, we'll open up Zim in a new tab, new window, new tab. There we go. And we'll put the main Zim over there, the updates right here. Okay, so going to the news here, and we will click on the banner of what's new. Uh, we saw all this stuff, and we're gonna go backwards. So if we go forwards through all of the ones that we've already looked at, that would be fine, but I'm just gonna go backwards here. And this is that, oh, I won, yay! So we're randomly picking a lose or a win here with the new odds. So Zim now has an odds function that this means it will be true 30 percent of the time and so uh, lose will show up 70 percent of the time i guess uh, but it's going to win 30 and actually in the console we have a recording of that just to test it right now we're really winning odds 30 win 30 percent okay um maybe we did it the other way around like this this means, well, it depends. We have to look at the code. We can't believe what it says here in this label. But it's probably cap capturing the lose again now. Okay, so it just happened. We had, we're on a winning streak, I guess we'll call it. And there's emojis that are being emitted. Isn't that cool? Uh, we've got QR codes. So there's a QR class that allows QR codes to show up here. If you capture that with your camera, it would take us, I think, probably to the Zim site. What are these triangles doing? Oh, random seed. Check this out. So on this page, these are randomly being placed here. And I refresh. And look, they're the same. And I refresh. They're the same. Basically, uh, we have seeded the random number with the same seed. And that means every time we use that same seed, any series of random numbers will always be the same. <laughs> Amazing, huh? So actually, this whole series of wins and losses will be exactly the same the next time we come in and run it. So bizarre, huh? Oh, unless we cleared it. I think we might have cleared it. I think what we did is we, we made it so it shows this based on the seed, and then we cleared 
the yeah that's right i remember we did because otherwise it would have looked like we're always winning and losing the same amount so we we cleared the random seed or we cleared the setting of a seed random so that this would be back to normal random oh what is this thing doing aside from bugging us crazy well we have the registration point now we can say right bottom and it will put the registration point at the the right hand side so that's what the rectangle normally looks like on the when it's here on the right at the bottom and then we're animating about the registration point there's also top center so you could actually instead of center reg you could now if you wanted to say reg center center uh, usually things are at the top left but you could take a circle for instance which has it in the middle usually and you could say left top and then that would put the registration point at the top left of a circle we have a direction variable uh, that you are a constant, I guess we call it a dir that you can set to right to left or left to right. That would be as a string. By default, it's left to right. And then if you do that, start, well, if start were normally left to right, if start were left to right, start would be the left and would be the right. But if you're right to left, start would be the right and end would be the left. So you can use these in positioning things like uh, uh, text and stuff like that. Okay. And so there we have an example of that happening. Blend modes. We can cycle through blend modes. Uh, these are the blend modes right at the very end, X out and ors or whatever that sometimes make things disappear. But here we are cycling through your traditional blend modes automatically. And I can press it, I think. I think you click the object to stop. And in the console, it's telling you, in the console, it tells you what blend mode you're on. I click it again and off it goes. So uh, let's find the one there. There's, oh, it might be a difference. I'm not sure. Something took away the border. That's neat, huh? And there's another one with the border taken away. So those are different blend modes. Because I don't know if, if you're like me, you go to say, I can't remember exactly what these blend modes do. And so you start pasting in the names of the blend modes to find out which one you want. <laughs> I've done that now for whatever, ever since blend modes have been around. So I decided uh, a blend mode, um, tool would be good. This is something that you would probably put into place as you're developing, uh, much like place, round brackets, that allow you to place something and find out where you placed it, and a few other outline and a few other tools like that grid and layout. Uh, what's the other one? Grid and um, uh, what's that thing called? The line that guide, a grid and a guide. I don't use grid and guide as much anymore that we developed place, but uh, blend modes has been handy. I've used it already a couple times since, <laughs> since we've implemented it. Yay. So I think that's it on the page here. Let's go in and take a look at the code quickly behind each of these things. Sound good? All right, variety, and it's inside of the NFT bubbling directory. It's called variety, or you can find it on that mini site. We're bringing in Zim NFT 01, a crystal for that. Uh, but we also, oh, that's right, I don't think we made a crystal. We considered making a crystal for QR code, which would be Zim underscore QR code. And we went, ah, nah. Uh, we do that if, if we're bringing in our own code. But if this is somebody else's code, so this exists out there already, it's a library. So I, I, I didn't really want to make a crystal that brings in somebody else's code. We, mind you, we do that with physics. It brings in Box2D. We do it with 3. It brings in 3JS. But it's also bringing in Zim code as well, you know, like uh, the, the, Zim game, uh, the Zim physics um module helper library and the Zim 3. Like we did a lot of code in there as well to work with 3JS, a lot of code in there to work with Box2D. We did no code in here at all. So not in a crystal, which means we're bringing that in extra. However, if we come on down here, there's blend modes, odds, and we may as well go to the QR code, just because we were talking about it. QR code. So new QR, we put in the URL and that's it. Uh, you can specify how big that is, and I think some things that the, the library that we, that we imported um, has some settings, like uh, how exact it is. There's a, com a combination between how well it can be printed and how, how 
big it is. I don't know. I can't remember which. They've got some settings there, but I don't think you'll ever have to use those settings. We're just using the default ones for the most part, and, and I think they'll be fine. So that's it. New QR. Put the URL, and uh, there you go. You got a QR code. So thank you, whoever was suggesting that in the forums. Oh, was it Bart? I think it was Bart. Did we put a thanks to Bart here? No, but I bet you we put a thanks to Bart here because we always do, so QR, or we always try, and if we ever do, you get us in trouble. But I think every every time somebody suggests something or requests a change, we're letting you know. So thanks, Bart Liber, uh, for the suggestion. Okay, And keep on suggesting. That's always nice. Um, we try and implement uh, things, if that makes sense to do. So that was a QR code, but now we may as well go back up to the start and start at the start. Blend modes. So a new rectangle. Oh, uh, for blend modes to work properly, that's that's interesting. For a blend mode to work properly, it needs to be on top of an object that's on the canvas. The canvas itself doesn't count. So that's good. That's good that the canvas doesn't count. If you want the canvas color to count, then just put a rectangle on the stage. So there's a rectangle on the stage that is the color of the stage. Now, this emoji that we're putting in here, its blend modes will be against the stage. Or if anything were under the emoji, its blend modes would be on that, okay? But if you were to put nothing there, like that, and open up in Browser Plus, that's the truck. We're putting blend modes on it, and it's just like, it's not working. Okay, why aren't the blend modes working? Well, there's nothing to blend against. If we put the rectangle in there and we refresh, then the blend modes will work. Here they are cycling through. Okay, so that cycles through the blend modes. And you also would want to know that you're seeing that in a console. So here's the console. There's the blend modes. We're also getting other messages, but the ones that are blue are the blend modes. Actually, that's interesting. I wonder why we did them in blue. Usually, when because uh, yellow is a warning. That's right. So that makes sense. Or blue for blend modes. Um, usually, when Zim is outputting something into the console without you doing it, we use yellow. Uh, but like I said, that, that would be for a warning. And so the idea is you would say, oh, I like that one. And you click on it. And you can then look at the console. Boop. And it will be the last one, luminosity, that uh, that setting is. And you use luminosity and just get rid of this thing. Don't use it anymore. Instead, you say bleh, like that. And luminosity, probably paste it in, and then you're all set. OK, and that's just a label about it. So next, odds. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to close. Well, the odds are showing up here. I just can't think when this <laughs> things go back and forth. <laughs> um, so I'm going to close that down. Let's take a look at odds. That's all label stuff, style. So an interval every three seconds, game.viz false. Uh, oh, uh, right. We're sort of hiding, I guess, the game for a bit. And, and then within a timeout, so we hide it for a bit and then we show the answer. Hide it for a bit and then show the answer. And when we show the answer, here it is. The game text is equal to 30% of the time it will be win. 70% of the time it will be lose. And like I said, in the console, we're actually keeping track of how close we are to, to that odds. Because, of course, it may, you know, we may be lucky, we may be unlucky. <laughs> there you go. All right, so that's true 30% of the time. I did this, and I went something like if. Last time I used this, I realized I went if odds is greater than 30. That's not how you use it. That's sort of how you did rand. If rand is greater than 0.3, well, it would actually be odds of 30% of would be if odds is less than 0.3. And that's really all that's behind here. Uh, in a round brackets. So if rand is less than 0.3, or in this context, it would be like a ternary operator here. Copy that. Paste it right in there. 
Yeah, get rid of that. So if rand is less than 0.3, rand, rand is between 0 and 1. So if it's less than 0.3, we win. That's a 30% odds. It's just sort of like, okay, yeah, I have to remember that, that it's less than or greater than which, you know, which way is it? We're, we're dealing with decimals. So we just made a little wrapper function. That's all that's in there is basically doing exactly that, taking whatever number we put here, divide it by 100, and put it there in the equation and return whether that's true or false. We return that. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's absolutely nothing in there, just a little bit easier to uh, remember to manage. So that's odds. And what we're doing is admitting based on that. <clears throat> oh, and we're recording the losses and the wins so that we can uh, output to the console in red our losses and wins and see if we're uh, true to that. And there's the emitter that we're emitting. By the way, we did some emitter work there. Look at this. We're emitting the emojis. Those are the, the various emojis we're emitting randomly. Zim V value. Amazing, huh? Isn't that so cool? Um, that's the size of it. So we could we could make that size be different by putting in mins and maxes here as well. I think we did it in a different way. I think we did it with scale. Did we scale it? No, we just they're all the same size then when they emit. But we did do some work here to make those emojis float a little bit. Okay, we're sending three of them out at a time. We're making them last a bit longer than usual. We're setting the angle so that they go up in the air. Up in the air is minus 90. Zero is horizontal. Minus 90 is up in the air. So minus 90 minus 60 more is 60 degrees from the vertical. Minus 90 plus 60 is 60 degrees to the right of the vertical. That's usually how I consider um, setting this up. I don't like going, okay, uh, I don't go 270 plus 30 uh, and then all the way to 290. You know, it's like, oh, uh, I can't concentrate that way. So I go negative 90 to go up. Negative 90 is up. Negative 60 is 60 more degrees from up. Negative 90 is up. Plus 60 is 60 degrees. That, and that makes a fountain. So what we've got going on here is a fountain. If we just said minus 90, they just all go straight up in the air. You want to see that? Minus 90, comma, and nothing in here. All right, variety. Well, we'll open it up in browser plus here. When we win, we lose. Oh, we lost. So you see how it disappears for a bit? There we go. <laughs> All right, there's your emojis. <laughs> straight up in the air, minus 90. Um, So anyway, this is not an explorer, but uh, whatever. And a variety of force as well. So let's save that and refresh here. A variety of force makes some of them not go as high and other ones go high. Otherwise, it looks like an umbrella shoots up. It, anyway, that's emitter stuff. You don't need to know that. But we did spend a bit of time making our emitter uh, work well. We lessen the gravity on that so it just sort of floated a little bit. All right, we like that. Style once. This is cool. Check this out. So quite often we set a style like a color of purple, boop, like that, and then we make our rectangle and we say, okay, I don't want the label to be purple. <laughs> That's what would happen. I just want the rectangle to be purple. So we have to come here and go style equals off. Oh that turns the style off. Or you could do it with style uh, dot clear. Either way would turn, turn the style off. Okay. Well, we've done that enough that it was a little bit annoying to do that. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Um, so what we did was make it so that we can say once colon true there and it will make the next object. And uh, once it makes that next object, it will turn the style off. Pretty cool, huh? So there you go. 
Just be a little bit careful. We'll use the purple next object. Go in, delete the style. I'm going to avoid the style after making the object great. Um, super. There is a warning on that. I can't remember what the warning is. <laughs> but it's in the docs under style because we did find... We we then started saying, well, okay, what if, what if, should we go twice? Twice equals true? Should we go three times true? What did we decide to do there? <laughs> Let's go check the docs. Uh, maybe we said, maybe we talked about it in here, style once, yeah. Added a once property, set this to true. Once we'll delete the style after the next object's made, regardless of whether the style is applied. Okay, so it's just as soon as the next object's made, it deletes it. Um, that's an example. Set a once property to a type such as a label, and the style will be cleared after the label has been made. Note, aha, some objects, like an arrow, is made from a button. Believe it or not, the Zim arrow is made from a button which has a label. So this can sometimes be tricky. That's where we had the problem. We, we uh, applied the style, said, okay, turn this off after we make a label. Well, the arrow has a label in it, <laughs> and we didn't realize that. And anyway, if, if you're having problems, just use just turn it off after like that. Okay, so anyway, that was kind of esoteric and I don't really need to talk about it too much right now, but that was the uh, gist of the problem that I do remember now. But that was a, it was a tough bug. I, I thought that once wasn't working. What is going on with, I close this and open it again and things are scrolling on me without me doing anything. Let's just close it. Actually, I'm gonna close variety and open it up again. So I noticed that a couple times doing that. What the heck is going on here? Um, emitter, right. So we looked at all this stuff. We talked about style once. Great. Ridge, how are you guys doing out there? <laughs> ah, a variety. I told you it was a variety, huh? Uh, here is us setting the registration to the right bottom. And how about the right top? Okay, let's have a look. Open in browser plus. Now when it starts, that's it there. Now the registration point is at the right top. Right middle, right center. I can't remember if we even support middle anymore. <laughs> I think I stopped supporting middle. Anyway, there's the right center right there. See, that's when it starts. It's at the right in the center. If we go center, center. So I think that'll be very handy. And I think it was C Carl who uh, suggested that which is a good idea. He probably saw it in some other programming language. And there it is, doing it about the center. That would be the same as center reg. All right. And we're centering that on the page and animating it. No big deal about any of that stuff. Here's the right to left. So direction, right to left. You'd probably do that up at the top of your page. And then um, when we do the label, we're putting in some text and we're aligning it to whatever the start is. So you see how that's aligned to the right there? That's because it's right to left. So it's going from the right to the left. So the start of the text is at the right and the end is at the left. Okay. So what would happen if we change that to left to right, we refresh here, it actually positions it. We positioned it at the right as well with this position at the start. So 100 from the start. If it were right to left, it's 100 from the right and the text is aligned. Now it's left to right, so we're 100 from the left and the text is left to right. Very cool, huh? Put this back to right to left. Of course, we wouldn't want to overwrite, you know, like we're it's a mess there, but right to left, that's how the plan was. There it is, right to left. Oh, we're still at the wrong place for that, aren't we? And that was top, I believe. Oh, no, bottom. What is going on here? Oh, I changed the label. <laughs> Changing label is not going to do much. Right bottom. Uh, where is it? Right bottom. There we go. As I noticed it, when it was right top here, it was swinging up and going on top of this thing. There you go. We're back to, to right to left. 
There's the QR codes, we talked about it. Here's the seed random. So seed random. This actually changes the uh, random number in... <laughs> you really said action script. <laughs> Truthfully, I haven't thought of action script in about, oh, I don't know, seven or eight years now. Anyway, <laughs> this changes the math.random in JavaScript. Uh, and right now you see how we've got red, red, blue, pink, gray. Well, if we add uh, something else here, a couple, couple things there, now we get a different, a different look. However, every time I refresh it, same different look. Red's on the top and the bottom, blue, gray, pink, same different look. If I bring it back like that, we get what we had before, red, red, blue, pink, gray. So neat, huh? So that seeds the random number, which means all sorts of things. This is, this is randomly picking from that. Well, it's going to randomly pick, but it will be the same way every time as long as that number is the same. And other things, like there's a random number between 1 and 1,000 going into the going into the uh, console here. So let's open up the console. Oh, uh, boy. <laughs> uh, refresh. There's the random number, 507. Uh, sorry, I can't get to my refresh while that console's there. Refresh, 507. Okay, you get it? But if we had something else here, it doesn't have to be in it. Well, actually, I mean, it's got to be, if it's a string, it's a string. We can put a string in there. So there's a string in there. And I refresh now. And the, ran uh, and the random number is 790. Right there. Refresh. The random number is 790. Okay, out of a thousand. 790 each time. Cool, huh? So what do we do there? We made a mess of things. So this is how FX hash. So why we why we added this is FX hash does this so that we can make generative art and come up with the same picture each time. Um, oh, just so beautiful our FX hash thing that we've just made. But that's uh, that's another that's another uh, video at some point. Actually, we just did make a video. There's an explorer video. If you take a look, you can check out what FX Hash is doing to mint random um, NFTs. But each time somebody buys something, the ID of what they bought gets put into the the random seed, and therefore their thing that they bought always looks the same. Somebody else buys something, they get a different ID because the ID of their NFT is different. So we're just using the, the ID of the NFT to see the random number. Theirs looks different, but it always looks the same. Um, yeah, yeah, same, different. Uh, there we are turning it off. So we turned it off so that everything else from now on, well, everything before it was random. Everything else after is just random, random, will be different every time. But this section right here is seeded with um, a certain number. And that's it. We're back to our header. So I guess there wasn't really anything else after it. There could have been, though, maybe. Oh, yeah, there is. Look, make icon. Lighter, purple. What is? Oh, no, that's not. I thought that was his MV value, but it's not. That's the slats in the icon right there. We made them all lighter. That's how you can make the Zim icon look in various ways like that all righty this has been a what's bubbling oh crap we're not done you thought we were done didn't you <laughs> darn half an hour we should have been done bubblings aren't supposed to go that long but we're almost done we, we just got the rest of this stuff right here okay <laughs> just all this that's it start at the top make sure we didn't miss anything Dialog, check. We did a main bubbling on that. Cam, check. Main bubbling. Emoji, check. Main bubbling. Zim crystals, we added a crystal for... Um, you see why we want to know these things? We added a crystal for pizzazz. And when we do that, instead of adding a crystal for pizzazz 1, a crystal for 2, 3, these are pretty small. We just made a crystal for pizzazz, and you get all three. 
right? They're really small, it doesn't matter. So that's backings, icons, and patterns. And then you can call any of those with the crystal. And also, of course, a crystal for the cam. Okay. Blend modes. Uh, we talked about that. Great. So that was that thing that cycles through the blend modes. Odds, yes, check. See random, check. Uh, this, by the way, is uh, mostly the examples from the docs. Right? So if you went to the docs for these, these are the examples. We brought them in there. I then figure that's a pretty efficient way of doing it. The docs are usually pretty decent at examples. Why not bring them into the updates thing? And we started formatting the updates as well uh, a few zims ago. QR code, check. And thank you, by the way, David Shim, and, and that uh, goes off to his QR code library there. But remember, you've got to include that uh, QR code library for the Zim QR uh, to work. For this to work, you've got to include that library. Dur, we talked about. Reg, we talked about. Style once, we talked about. Convert color updates. Um, oh, yeah, it turns out, I never knew this, but hex colors can have two more characters added to the end that do alpha. So thanks, Amy, for letting us know there. So we've adjusted our things so that that all works. That was a pain in the that this, this is a mess. Convert colors is just so twisty. What we really should do in convert colors is just take any input and convert it to RGBA and take RGBA and output it to any output. What we're doing now is we're kind of like taking some in and swapping little things and then swapping them to this if we do that. And it's just like, oh, it's just become such a mess. We had no idea that we were going to ha have to handle so many conversions. Anyway, we, we almost rewrote the whole thing, but we managed to make it just work with the, the mess it is. Rewriting code, that's called refactoring, by the way. Tilt. We added tilt to the docs, so uh, we could go to the docs here, but that would open up in the same window, so let's just go to the docs, and I'll point out tilt right there. So the frame used to be all alone. Then we took out the images part, because people want to know about images, even though it's in the frame, the assets. Uh, same with sounds, fonts. Those are all actually under assets, but of interest sort of independently. And now we've done that with Tilt. So t Tilt just reminds you that uh, show has some examples. They were in the doc in in the frame docs already. Reminds you that you've got device motion and device orientation events. So in frame that could be found way at the bottom under events. They're one of the events here. So ticka 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 ticka. See why maybe people wouldn't find it. So here are the events. There's orientation. Uh, oh, that's a different one. Device orientation is right here. And there's the examples for device orientation. Here's device motion and the examples for that. So we took those out. Uh, well, we left them there, but oh crap. Did I just close that? I get it. And put them in the docs. You saw it there. All right, frame ta tab has a focus and a blur. So in those events there in the docs, you'll notice now that there's a tab focus and tab blur. So if you change tabs, like here, I'm no longer in the tab of here uh, or in here. You see though, those might have all paused or whatever. And we, we might not want to, we might want to know when we've changed tabs like that. And so that would give uh, Zim uh, an event saying we just lost focus. That's blur. Tap focus is we just came back. We built that in already with the pausing animation automatically as we as we leave. That's called pause on blur. On blur. <laughs> blur. <laughs> I live near Toronto. We've got Blur Street. Um, but anyway, um, that's that's there for us now. Good. And indicator updates, we talked about that. Collapse, and we there's some more panel fixes as well. We went in and we really adjusted those, those uh, closes and corners and stuff. So we, we had to change, there might be some breaks to icon uh, or the close icons and stuff for both the panel and window, possibly list. Uh, I think so we tidied up how all those work together 
made some adjustments to window. We realized we, we missed these events on window. So we now have those events that trigger. And the way that the add works, we've adjusted that as well. So add, if you want, we passed in a center, I think. I can't remember which one of these is new, the replace or the center. <laughs> Maybe both are new. Um, but anyway, take a look at the add thing. So that would allow us to center content on there. I think that was the new one. And yeah, replace was traditionally there. Okay, but we adjusted it. We said, ah, center is probably more important than actually replacing the content. So we stuck that first. I don't think people use that all that much. So I didn't wasn't too worried about it uh, breaking, but anyway, that's a break. Remember to watch the yellows when they break. Spline. Ah, right. I didn't do an example of spline, but probably should have. Uh, we grabbed some some code from George Does Code and inserted it into Zim so that we can draw a spline around something. The, the, where we saw this in the first place was here. Uh, put -ta, put -ta, put -ta, put -ta, put -ta. Well, we have a new tab. And where did I put that? Well, it would probably be, oh no, it's in Dan's end. So that's on code pen. But it's in the Dan's end rather than the Zim one. So here's that beautiful thing that we've made for FX hash. Uh, well, since we're looking at kind of new things, there's that's new. So in CodePen, we've added an NFT logo to any CodePen that is uh, also an NFT. So we've got the, the code in here for people to see, but if you link here, it will take you to the NFT. So we went back through our code pens that we've turned into NFTs and added that nice little logo in one place or another. All right, well, okay, I'll have to quickly log out and log back in as uh, Dan Zen, Dr. Abstract. So this is a remake right here, a remake of a spirogram that was coded by somebody else. And the way they made these lines was using this, this equation right here with the cosines and the sines and stuff right in there like that. So that equation, and they took the points that were made from that equation, and they passed them into a spline. So we were making three shapes, which are here. And there we're, we're making a zim shape. And then we make a spline and pass in the points. Uh, how did that get into the, the shape? Oh, there's the shape right there. So here's the shape that we've made. One option is to make a spline, which will draw a line. So a spline is just a line through a bunch of points. Isn't that nice? Um, and there we are passing in the shape to draw that in. Because you don't have to. Once we make a spline, we're actually getting, with that spline, we get, uh, qu not quite a quintic, uh, quint um, bezier. Uh, points in a sense and basically we can pass the result of that into a blob or a squiggle that means that we can make a blob or a squiggle out of this amazing huh or if it were simpler points like five points anywhere it, it would then make a squiggle through those five points or make a blob if it if it connects like well it will it will try and connect and it will connect smoothly as well so that's that's pretty cool um, thank you for the original author of that, although really in theory uh, this equation has been around forever. It's no big deal, but they've done a nice job of um, animating them in. It was a green, like it was a pain in the neck, like uh, Code Pen did a whole month of green sock basically for the challenges and it's like, okay. So I sort of had enough of that and there, one of the green sock examples that I saw was there and I went okay well let's remake that and when I remade that I realized the power of the spline and they had used that same library as well to get the spline 
code. And so I went to that library and I went, oh, this isn't very much code. This is, you know, and it, it, it's good code, but I, it probably wasn't even his code to start off with. It's probably been around, like it might have been, but it's probably been around for ages to make a spline. And so uh, we took that code and stuck it into Zim, uh, which is nice, and credited it in the, you know, in the credit area and stuff like that. So once we did that, the rest of Zim, to be able to make this tap button, to be able to um, do the stuff that we're doing, uh, like, well, that, that's the same exact equation. But basically, to do this stuff right here, the new shape and animate it right there, new shape and animate, this code that we've got here is 62%. It's actually all the code, all the code, including, you know, the Zim setup and stuff like that, is 62% the size of the example code using HTML, CS, CSS, J, JavaScript, GSAP, and SVG. Okay, that's almost half the code. And we're able to do this on the canvas and almost half the code. <laughs> you know, and that other thing was coded really well. Like it could have been way bigger, but Michelle um, Barker, it was really tight. I, you know, I looked at it and I went, Ay, 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 there's not too much room for improvement here on that side. This is code is really tight. You know, they, they shorten it down with all these ES6, um, you know, a lot of ES6 work that I almost didn't understand. <laughs> Do you want it? Well, it's not an explorer, so I'm not going to show it to you now. It's late in the day. <laughs> you know, we've been at this 40 minutes, but isn't all this stuff exciting? So now we have a spline. Yay. Um series shuffle and random oh that's cool too oh, we've got a shuffle on a series so the nice thing about a series it will do something in order the bad thing about a series is it did the same thing in order so now what we've got i mean there's a way around that we could have shuffled the array and passed it into the series there you go two steps now you just make the series say dot shuffle on the end and it will do a series um, shuffled and keep on repeating it. That's the difference. So it'll keep on repeating that same shuffled series. Random, if you put random on the end, every time the series goes, it then does a different, uh, like it randomizes those same, those same values and does the series in steps. I'm kind of wondering, oh, it is still important because, well, it's not quite that important. I think random you're gonna use less. I think shuffle's good. Often you want to do something, but not repeat what you had before. Do you see the problem with random? At the beginning or at the end, uh, well, the end is the beginning kind of thing, you, you possibly might repeat. So it's not going to repeat as it goes through the steps inside, but as it goes to wrap around to the beginning again, it might actually, it's going to reshuffle. It might actually repeat there. It won't repeat in the middle, but it's going to possibly repeat at the ends. Therefore, I don't think random is going to be too useful. I think shuffles more useful. And general ones. Text, when we emitted text, it was flashing. And that was just <laughs> unbelievable. Just the placement of where we put the an alpha within code that was in line. And that really shouldn't happen, but in the complexities of the of the many texts and you know stuff, it just was causing a very fast flash in text. And I've been noticing that for I don't know for the last while, and I kind of tried to ignore it. But uh, finally, we really dug into that and figured out what it was, and it was just the placement of where we called alpha. It, it you know before we even stage dot updated that that was so weird. You know, and usually stage dot update. You know, it doesn't matter the order of things, <laughs> but some for some reason the the order did matter he, he, between stage dot updates. Very strange. So that glitch is out of there. Um, label width and label height. So shift horizontal, shift vertical happens once. Oh yeah, that's right. If we had a label width and a label height, so that things fit within a label dimension box. Uh, there, for some reason, we were calling the shift horizontal and shift vertical twice. If once in, in that setup, we weren't. If it weren't, weren't that, so not that you noticed all that much. Uh, but anyway, we fixed that. Oh, you know what? Just come here and read this for crying out loud. You know, I, this is 
all the little things uh, that went into it, okay? So uh, we also looked at the Zim Shim and sorted it out with four new folders. So we've got four folders in there basically. And the basic example is sitting alone in Zim Shim on how to use Zim with Adobe Animate. Then we see it with data, we see it in full mode with physics and using local testing, uh, or sorry, local files, which is important sometimes rather than the CDN. So how do you call CreateJS and Zim locally on your own server rather than um, the CDN? Okay, so four examples and thanks Paul Ruda who's been doing uh, good work in there and was asking questions about things. The docs have individual pages. Did you see that? Oh my goodness. So here's the docs here. And if we go into, I don't know, the poly, for instance, scroll on down at the poly. If you hit page, here's a page of the poly, that same thing, all on its own. So you can link to that if you need to. And then here I'm going to close it and we're back to the poly in the docs here. So we adjusted that slightly. Same with uh, the code page. Same deal. If you hit the Z now, that popped up a poly. Uh, the code for the poly, if you hit the Z, it just closes it and goes back before you had to manually close it up in the browser. But now we kind of work through that a bit. Um, and on the site, we added the emoji tool to the tool section. Uh, and a custom library of, this is really cool. Uh, we should probably do an explore on that. Maybe we did, already. yeah, we did. We did two explorers on that. It took a couple hours to do. So that's been added near model view controller node package manager uh, on how to make custom libraries, just like we make custom libraries. We did that as we were making cam. When we made the custom library for cam, we had a question about it and we said, okay, let's, let's do a good example for both ES6 and ES5 on how to do custom libraries, including how to use Zim Duo and Zim V and Zim Oct. So you can apply styles and Zim V values and Zim Duo to your own classes. And so we show you how to build that in both ES5 and ES6. And we've got a copy button on the asset tool. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. All right. Um, I wanted to show you something though. Let's just take a peek at the code page. That looks like it. And then we're doing the bubbling videos now. So that's over here, bubbling videos. We have yet to do TypeScript, Node Package Manager. So anyway, we're, we're still working through this stuff and we've done these guys. The code page looks like this. <laughs> There's that paused wind. Um, code page, code page, Zim code page Zim code hello it's thinking why is him thinking <laughs> come on give me a break <laughs> where's the code page <laughs> two seconds away from the end of the public video when the code page will load uh, on the code page is um, a new thing for uh, what was that tool again the emoji tool okay it's in the tool section there's the emoji tool <laughs> And I'm going to close down the bubbling because my voice has been bubbled out. Oh, you're probably going, oh my God, it's almost an hour of bubbling. What a variety of things. Okay, so I am Dr. Abstract, that little fellow there. That's how I feel right now. Well, maybe without the smile. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, I'm Dr. Abstract. If you're still here, then you should definitely come and join us at zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord, and we'd love to see you there. Join our community if you haven't already, probably already have. Yay! Have a great night or day. All the best. Bye-bye.